This week on Maker Update, a MIDI compatible music box, alternative controller indie games at GDC, an Arduino for your knife, controlling your computer with zombie heads, free game developer software, and Hackspace issue 5. I'm Donald Bell and welcome to another Maker Update. I hope everyone's doing well. Aside from some allergies, I've been having a great week. I got to go to that Alt Control GDC showcase I was telling you about last week and it blew my mind. I'll tell you more about that in a minute, but first let's kick things off with the project of the week. This MIDI music box by Tim Alex Jacobs, AKA Mitzella, has been making the rounds this week. Between his blog post, his YouTube video, and his GitHub page, he walks through the ups and downs of trying to turn this hand crank, punch card style music box into an instrument that can respond to digital music input using MIDI. At first he tries to create a script that generates infinitely long laser cut punch cards from MIDI notes, but the overlapping seams of the paper caused it to jam up and forced him to create this clever, though far more involved solution. You're looking at an array of 30 MIDI controlled servos driving brass rods to individually pluck each note. Plus, one extra continuous rotation servo used to crank the winding gear automatically. An STM32F103 project board, sort of like an Arduino Nano, is used to send PWM messages to each of the servos and take analog input from a breakout chip called a 6N137, which seems to be turning incoming MIDI signals into a varying analog output that the servo board can read. Also, to make sure there's enough power to drive all of those servos, he's got one of those big outboard power supplies you sometimes see on large LED light projects. It's an ambitious, complicated, delicate project that I would probably never attempt, but man, the sound of the music box is so nice, I can absolutely understand wanting to take control of it. It's time for some news, and here's where I'll talk about my time covering GDC's Alt Control Showcase last week. Off in the back section of this huge corporate video game convention, 20 groups of makers showed off their one-of-a-kind games exploring the possibilities of new and surprising techniques for controlling or interacting with games. For me, it was heaven. It was like a mini maker fair where every project was something fun that you could play. Everyone was super nice and happy to explain how they made everything, and most of the elements were exactly what we talk about on the show. Arduino, Raspberry Pi, addressable LEDs, 3D printing, laser cutting. But on top of that was another layer I got to learn about, which was video game design and platforms like Unity, which I'll talk about more in a minute. My only regret is that I was only able to get time with a handful of the 20 projects before needing to get back home. Five of those interviews have turned into separate Maker Project Lab videos that I'll link to here. Also, check out my full write-up on the Maker Project Lab website with links and videos of all the other games. All right, one more project from this past week I want to talk about is this instructable from Becky Stern showing how to create a wireless box to help you find the best angle for sharpening your knives. To effectively read the exact orientation of the blade in every direction, Becky uses a BNO55 9-axis breakout board. The data is then sent to an Adafruit Blue Fruit Feather 32U4 microcontroller, allowing you to get feedback of your angle right on your phone. The board also makes it tidy to plug in a small LiPo battery and bundle everything into a small box, which snaps onto your knife with little magnets. If you're looking to refine your knife sharpening skills or maybe your handsaw skills, this could be a great project for you. It's time for another cool tool review. This time we're going to take a look at the Makey Makey Kit. This sells for around $50 on Amazon and with it you can interact with your computer using everyday objects. I'm going to tell you more about it, but if you want to pick one up, you can use the Amazon link in the description, which helps support my videos and the Cool Tools blog. If you haven't heard of the Makey Makey board, it's been around for a few years now and has become a staple of the Steam Educator Toolkit. But what I've only just learned is that it's also a very popular tool for game developers who want to quickly prototype unique game controllers. For example, I met this group of students last week who developed a fun zombie chase game called Disco is Dead. The game is controlled by slapping the sides of a costume store zombie head and touching a little disco ball for extra power. Their not so secret weapon for making the zombie head disco ball controller was just to use aluminum foil and alligator clips and attach it all to a single Makey Makey board. The genius of this board is that there's no setup or programming required. You just plug it into your computer using the included USB cable and it basically acts as a very limited keyboard. For example, by holding the bottom section labeled Earth with one hand, I can use my other hand to navigate up, down, left, right, or press the space bar or make a mouse click. Slightly more advanced, I could take one of the many included alligator clips 
connect up one side of an arcade button to Earth and the other side of the button to space. And now I have a one button game controller I can use to play a game like Google's offline dinosaur game. Taking it further than that, I can find free Makey Makey compatible games and interactive instruments built in MIT's Scratch platform, make more elaborate controllers with foil or fruit or copper tape. And if I want even more inputs or a way to breadboard this into a project, I can flip it over and access more options. That's the Makey Makey. It works with any computer. The kit comes with a USB cable, a bunch of quality alligator clips, some hookup wire for exploring the connections on the back, and illustrated instructions to get you started. There's also a huge online community with projects and ideas to explore. You can find a link to pick one up in the video description, and you can see thousands of reader-recommended tools like this at cool-tools.org. On a related note, I have a few more tools and tips to share. Since I've been curious now to develop my own silly game just to see if I can, I've been looking into free platforms that would be good for beginners. One I learned about at GDC is called Game Maker Studio. It can be used drag and drop, the results look great, and the tutorials are clearly geared towards curious beginners like me. Another option is the free edition of Unity. About half the games I demoed at GDC were built in Unity. If you really want to explore what a professional tool can do, this seems like the way to go. I think as an analog, you can think of Game Maker Studio as a Tinkercad and Unity as a Fusion 360. Either way, it's cool that there are good free tools that anyone can check out. I also want to let you know that issue 5 of Hackspace Magazine is out with Lady Ada on the cover and a great profile on her, plus a dive into the Pi 3B Plus and working with LEDs. As always, you can download the issue as a free PDF. Maker Fairs! We have two this weekend, including a mini fair in Chicago and one in Ankara, Turkey. Check those out if you're nearby. And that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment, get on the email list, get yourself a Makey Makey board and start playing around with alternative controllers. And if you really like this episode or the GDC profiles I did last week, you can buy me a coffee using the buy me a coffee link right down here. That always feels great. All right. And also this past week, the Maker Project Lab channel, this channel right here that you should subscribe to, past 10,000 subscribers, which is amazing. I, it blows my mind thinking that there's that many of you out there who enjoy watching me talk about this stuff. It makes me feel really good. So thank you guys for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.